All right. Well, happy Sabbath, everybody. It's great to be here on another Friday night. And it's going to be a special jam-packed night tonight as we have, again, Isaac speaking for us, which is always a blessing to have. But before we get into that, let's have a quick word of prayer. Chase, would you be willing to open us up in prayer? Um, sure. Can you hear me? Awesome. All right. So, all right, uh, everyone, uh, close your eyes and bow your head. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us to make it through um, another week. Um, we thank you for protecting us from the things that we did not see. And we thank you for blessing us, even though we take some of the blessings you've given us uh, for granted. Um, please help us to have grateful hearts. Please be with Isaac as he speaks tonight. Please remove all the distractions and all the way that the enemy is trying to uh, mess up tonight's presentation and our gathering together, Lord. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. So Lord, please be with each of us individually, even though we're gathering together virtually. And Father, these things I ask and pray that your name will be glorified in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And before we get into the message, let's open up our hearts with some praise. So tonight we will be having Jaden and his group singing a song called Witnesses. Witness, just witness. Witness, witness, witness for my Lord.
<laughs> that's what I'm going to say. That was awesome. What, what, what you know about some Negro spirituals, Jaden? Come on now. Love it. <laughs> Amen. Praise God for sure. What a blessing. That's a great, great way to open up. Don't you guys agree? That's it. Great way to open up. Well, now we'll give this time to our very good friend, Isaac, who is going to be giving us a beautiful message as always. Take it away. Amen. Amen. Witness to my Lord. That's, that's awesome. And that uh, really goes with my message today. I want to share about how we can be a witness for our Lord. And I'm going to be sharing some experiences that uh, I've been having in recent uh, weeks going. A lot of you know, I've been going uh, door to door canvassing and uh, some experiences that I've had and some lessons that I've uh, learned. And uh, but before we do, I just uh, like to pray one more time. Uh, so let's uh, pray once more. Uh, dear Father in heaven, uh, Lord, we thank you for this uh, privilege to gather here together on your Sabbath day. And to uh, learn some from your words, some lessons that you have for us. God, I ask that you speak through me. If ever you speak through me, uh, speak through me now. And uh, just guide my lips. And uh, please help me to speak with clarity and uh, power. And uh, just uh, speak through this earthen vessel and uh, fill this uh, Zoom room with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, I'm going to start with this. Uh, illustration by Charles Spurgeon. And uh, he says this, he says, our afflictions are like weights and have a tendency to bow us to the dust. But there is a way of arranging weights by means of wheels and pulleys so that they will even lift us up. Grace by its matchless art has often turned the heaviest of our trials into occasions for heavenly joy. We glory in tribulations also. We gather honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. And uh, today I want to be I want to talk about how sometimes our uh, our cross, sometimes our afflictions in life, they feel heavy and they feel like they're burdening us down. But there is a way by means of grace that these uh, hardships, these crosses, can actually lift us up and ennoble and empower us. And so I'm just going to share my slides real fast. Um, give me one moment. I need to pull them up. Share screen. And so I right, can everyone see that all right? No. Yes. You guys see it? All right, perfect. Okay, so uh, the sermon title is going to be uh, Take Up Your Cross Daily. And we're going to be talking about what it really means and what I've learned from uh, this uh, passage um, in regards to uh, being a witness. And so the verse that uh, we're going to be in um, for this message is going to be Luke uh, chapter 9. So go ahead and Turn to Luke chapter 9, uh, verses 23 to 26. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 23 to 26. And you can just be here like the whole time because we're going to be in it for uh, pretty much the whole mess and just uh, dissecting it verse by verse. So if uh, you don't have a Bible and you, maybe you have one upstairs or downstairs, then go ahead and go get it because uh, we're going to be here and I won't always have it on the screen uh, to follow along with. So uh, Luke chapter 9. Verses 23 to 26. And we're going to be noticing six main points 
uh, from this, uh, from these verses that I want to uh, bring out and draw from them. So uh, I hope you're there. And uh, let's, I just go ahead and read the first verse. And it says, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So the first point uh, that I want to make is that taking up your cross is a requirement for following Christ. Taking up your cross is a requirement for following Christ. Notice in the uh, previous verse, it's in, it said, uh, Jesus, he said to how many of them? He said to all the pastors, right? He said to all of the Bible workers. He said to everyone who wants to be high up in the kingdom. Is that what he, how many he says it to? Or does he say it to all, which includes how many? All, right? <laughs> And so, and he says, what does he say that, to them all? He says, if anyone desires to come after me. So are you an anyone in this Zoom room tonight? Anyone? Are you guys anyone? Okay, perfect. So this, uh, what Jesus is about to say applies to you and to me. So the backwards, to you and to me. Um, so uh, taking up your cross is a requirement for following Christ. And one extra verse on this is first John chapter two, verses five to six that says, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So just like Jesus had a cross to bear, to die on, even so we are to take up our cross and die on it. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more what this uh, dying on a cross means for you and for me. And the uh, second point I want to draw from this is where the emphasis is in this verse. And we're going to notice that the emphasis isn't on what you aren't doing, but on what you are doing. The emphasis in the verse, uh, let's go back to it, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And sometimes uh, we're prone to fixate on this deny himself daily and take up his cross or take up his cross daily and deny himself. We're prone to just fixate on this and we forget the last uh, three words in the verse, which says, and follow me. Sometimes we just fixate on denying ourselves and what I have to not do, like don't do this, don't do that, we can't do this, that we forget that the point of not doing this is to follow Jesus. We have to follow Jesus. And when we lose our focus, which is Jesus, then that's when we uh, go into the wrong path. That's when we fall into the wrong ditches. Like there's some people who just focus so much on denying themselves. Like that was kind of the issue. Um, that Martin Luther had, uh, if you've read, uh, for example, the big controversy where, um, where Martin Luther had, uh, you know, and many people, many you know, monks and priests and whoever, uh, they, you know, would just deny themselves terribly, but they had no purpose for denying themselves. They were just like denying themselves for no apparent reason. But why are we denying ourselves? Why are we denying ourselves? Denying ourselves for a purpose and we're denying ourselves because of love it's not just for no reason at all we're denying ourselves because um we're going to focus on loving others because our focus isn't just on not doing this but it's doing something following jesus and doing good to others um in matthew tw chapter 25 uh, jesus gives um several parables but there's two that I want to just draw a couple of points from. I won't take time to turn to it. Um, but in verses uh, 14 to 30, uh, Jesus gives a parable of the talents. And if you remember, uh, this uh, one ruler uh, gives to one servant, he gives five talents. Another he gives two talents. And another he gives one talent. The one with five talents, he uh, invested and he gained five more talents. The one with two talents, he invested, and he gained two more talents. 
and the one with one talent, he did nothing, and he gained no talents. And the emphasis in this uh, parable wasn't that that uh, servant with just one talent was necessarily doing anything wrong. There wasn't you know, some grave sin that you know he was doing, like murdering or committing adultery or, or something else. It was just what he was neglecting to do. It's not that he was actively doing evil, but that he wasn't doing good. And sometimes we as Christians, we, you know, we think we just, oh, you know, I don't do these bad sins, so I'm okay. You know, I can go to heaven because I just don't do these things. And so often it's the people in church who, you know, feel like they just have one talent, like they're not gifted like the pastor or like the Bible worker or whoever sings uh, special music. We think we're not gifted and talented like them. And we bury the one talent that we do have where we could be a blessing and we don't give it to God. We don't work with what God has given to us and we fail in being that blessing to others to the degree that God has given us. And the verses following in verses uh, 31 to 46 of Matthew 25, Jesus gives another parable of the sheep and the goats. And you have the same exact emphasis um, with the with the goats. It was that they um, refused to do good. They didn't minister to those in pr prison. They didn't feed the hungry. They didn't clothe the naked. And with the sheep, it was the opposite. They did feed the hungry. They did visit those in prison. They did um, clothe the naked. And so the emphasis in this parable as well is not on that the wicked were doing these evil sins or that the righteous were refusing to do these evil sins. It was that they were refusing to do good or they were doing good. So it's not always just like, what sin can we avoid? It's also what good thing can we do? And that's uh, what I really want to just focus in on on this verse, uh, Luke 9, 23, is that the emphasis isn't just denying ourselves and taking up our cross just for no reason. The emphasis is doing this so that we can follow Jesus and his mission and uh, living and laboring and sacrificing even unto death for the saving of humanity. It's to join Christ in his mission of loving others supremely. Um, and our next point, or actually one verse, or a couple of verses I want to read on this, is in first Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, and then Romans 12, 21. And Isaiah 1, 16 and 17 says, Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good, Seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. And notice it doesn't just say, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil. God doesn't stop there. He says, not only don't do this, but also do this. Cease to do evil, but learn to do good. Seek justice. And he continues going. So it's not just stop doing this, but do this. God has better plans for us, not just plans he wants to cancel out, but he wants to give us a purpose. He wants to fill our cup. And Romans 12, 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So it's not like we just stop listening to that bad music, but we listen to good music. It's not like we don't just stop uh, you know, spending all of our time doing this, but we start spending our time doing this, serving God and serving others. And so don't just focus on, you know, what should I not do? But you should also be focusing on heavily what we can do to be a blessing. Okay, now, point number three. Taking up your cross means loving God and loving others. Now, if you notice on a cross, how many boards are there? There's two boards, right? There's the um, vertical board, and then there's the horizontal board, right? 
And that uh, can be seen as representing our relationship with God and our relationship with man. And a verse I'm going to read on this is Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. This is the uh, great commandment, the two great commandments. Uh, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And it's interesting uh, just going through this and preparing for this sermon, how Jesus said on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, almost as if Jesus hanging on the cross embodied this whole commandment in love for God and love for man, that vertical and horizontal love. And the same thing with us when we take up our cross like what does that really mean is it just self-denial is it just not doing these things or is it also actively loving others actively loving god that's what it really means to take up our cross it's not just you know like oh self-denial you know like gotta grit your teeth um i mean self-denial requires a lot of effort but it's not just not doing this it's also doing this it's also being a blessing it's also just focusing on others and taking the emphasis off of me. And so instead of focusing on our own wants every day, we need to be focusing on being a blessing to others, not just loving ourselves, but loving others. That's what it really means to take up our cross is to stop thinking about ourselves so much and think about others. You know, so often like we just, and I find myself just like, just all the time it's like, you know, we get upset about something or we get, you know, we feel offended or hurt. And, you know, sometimes I'll just take a step back and I'm like, you know, am I hurt? Because I'm just thinking about myself. Like, what if I just chose to forgive and just be like Jesus? And what if I you know, just chose to, you know, let them, um, you know, take a shower first or, you know, let them. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, what if I just let them. Um, you know, just have the second slice of pizza or, or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, just what if we just stop thinking about ourselves so much and think about others, how it can really just, you know, Christ to them. And that's something that, you know, we need to ask God to teach us every day. Like, we need to ask him, God, you know, just remind me to not be so, you know, just thinking about myself so much. Help me to think about how I can just be a blessing to others. And that's what Christ's whole mission was, is focusing on others and being a blessing to others. And uh, the next point I want to bring out is that taking up your cross starts every morning. And the reason that I like the Luke chapter 9's version of this um, of this uh, command, really, is that um, he includes the word uh, daily. Because Jesus says, if anyone desire, desires to come after me, let him des deny himself and take up his cross daily. And so it's not like we just take up our cross uh, once a week. You know, Sabbath morning, it's not just we just take up our cross sometimes, occasionally. We don't just take up our cross in the morning uh, for devotions. It's uh, we're taking up our cross not only in the mornings, but uh, all the time, every day. And uh, a verse I want to share on this is Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. And it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. 
but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so even though our affliction sometimes, it can be hard to take up our cross daily. It can be hard to deny ourselves to stop focusing on ourselves and start focusing on others. But the promise is, is that the inward man is being renewed day by day. And it's really just light affliction because, you know, that time when we're choosing to stop thinking about ourselves in this moment and choosing to focus on others, that's a time when Christ is working in us to transform our characters, to be more like him. And that's why we don't have to lose heart. We can be encouraged, even though at times it seems like that cross is about to crush us and it can be heavy and hard, but God is renewing us. He's transforming us. Don't give up, guys. One more verse on this. Second Corinthians 3.18. I love this verse. And it says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, it's interesting if you do a, a word study on that word glory, you can find uh, almost every time that you can like interchange it with the word character and with the word image. You can almost, it's interesting, you take those three words and try um, just substituting the words uh, for different, for those same three words. And you'll find that they are really linked together in a close way because. As we are uh, choosing to behold Christ, as we are ch choosing to behold in a mere glory of the Lord, to set our mind on Jesus, as Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4 talks about, then that's when we're going to be transformed every day uh, to be more like Jesus. And so when we're uh, focusing on Christ and we're taking up our cross to follow him, to be more like him, that's when uh, he's going to work in us to... Uh, make us more like him. And so in the mornings, uh, you know, are we choosing to behold Christ more and more? Or are we choosing to, you know, reach for our Bibles first or our phones first? Are we checking God's news or the world's news? Are we seeing what God has uh, texted us for this morning or, or just what your friend texted you last night? You know, are we making God our, our best and sweetest thoughts every morning and every night, every day, or are we just, you know, just kind of moseying along and, you know, just making intermittent efforts to be like him. He wants to transform our characters. He wants to um, give us the joy of his salvation, but it only um, starts by taking up our cross daily and focusing on him every day. And though it can include self-denial, and it will include self-denial, but it is a joy, and it's not just not doing this, but it's doing this, and that's when he fills our cup with the joy of his salvation, and it overflows to others, and that's when we can be a daily witness, and he wants us to be a daily witness, and that's what it means, to take up our cross daily, be a witness for him. So do we spend large portions of our days on just entertainment or soul winning? Are we taking up our cross daily or are we just, you know, focusing on me daily? Um, that can tell a lot about where we are. I walk with God. He wants to uh, give us a uh, greater purpose. And uh, the next part of this, if you go back to Luke chapter nine, um, Verse uh, 24 and 25. And it says, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? What profit is it if we are, you know, intent where we are and we're not, you know, joining Christ in his mission of loving people. We're not taking up our cross daily. You know, sometimes um, being in the church of Laodicea, we think that we're all right. We think that 
you know, we're rich and increased with goods. We think that we're on fire for God and we're not. We think that, you know, we go to church every week. We're part of this cool youth group that meets every week and we go through the motions, but there's little self-denial still. We don't really focus on reaching out to others. We just focus on, you know, maybe um, just being a blessing to myself. What can this youth group give to me? What can this church give to me? How can, you know, this help me instead of really unloading ourselves and focusing on how we can be a blessing to others with nothing in it for me. And so from this uh, verse, there's a very important point that I want to spend a little bit of time on, and that is that to follow Christ, we need to get uncomfortable. We need to get uncomfortable. Now, I want to read a story that you're probably very familiar with, and Jesus gives a call to a rich young ruler to get uncomfortable. You can find it in uh, Mark chapter 10 and verses 17 to 22. You can find it elsewhere in the Bible as well. Um, but I'm going to read from Mark chapter 10. And it says, Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is God. And by the way, I used to be confused on that. I used to, you know, kind of think like, why did Jesus say that? Like, is he saying that he wasn't God? But then I asked this actually on Amazing Facts, um, the Bible uh, Bible Answers program that they have on, on Sundays, I believe. And uh, they helped me understand that um, what Jesus was really doing here, he wasn't denying his goodness. He was claiming his Godship. He was asking that rich young ruler, he was saying, you know, why are you calling me good? If I'm really good like you say I am, then who must I be? God. And, and this helps uh, make um, his, his call even clearer and even bolsters it, the call that he's going to make in the coming verse. So let's uh, continue. He says, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And in uh, Matthew's version, he asked, what do I still lack? And sometimes, you know, you and I, we feel that, you know, maybe growing up in the church, like sometimes, oh, you know, I, I've kept all these things from my youth, right? You know, I haven't, you know, killed anybody. I haven't, you know, stolen anything big, right? I haven't, you know, committed adultery or something. Um, and sometimes we feel like the rich young ruler, but even still, we know that we lack something. And what did that rich young ruler lack? So Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go. And, you know, I think the what Jesus would be saying to a lot of us today and maybe a lot of us in this Zoom room is that one thing you and I lack, go. And we need to focus more on going. So Jesus says, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. So are we willing to go um, like Jesus asked this rich young ruler? Are we willing to give up our comfortableness, take up our cross, and follow Jesus? <clears throat> you know, Jesus made a very special call 
uh, to this rich young ruler. It wasn't very often that Jesus said to somebody, follow me. You know, the other times that he said that, you know, he got disciples. They were one of the 12 disciples. You know, this could have, you know, hypothetically been like the 13th disciple or something, or maybe Judas's replacement. But this rich young ruler was unwilling to get comfortable or uncomfortable for Christ. So are we willing to get uncomfortable for Christ? You know, Jesus may not be saying to us, sell everything that you have and, you know, follow me. But Jesus asks everyone to get uncomfortable, to take up our cross. And that can look different for all of us. Jesus might be calling um, us to get uncomfortable by, you know, sharing our faith with somebody in line at a restaurant. He might be calling us to get uncomfortable by speaking up against somebody um, that says something that you know you should speak up about, uh, which happens to me a lot. And, you know, maybe God is calling you to get uncomfortable and to just, you know, like get in front of, uh, you know, people and just get out of your comfort zone and, and share your faith or, you know, share special music sometime or, or lead a Sabbath school or something, you know, God is asking us to, you know, take a step of faith to invest that one talent that we have and he will increase it. And sometimes we just, you know, kind of sit back and ask God, you know, just, you know, do something for me and, you know, increase my faith, increase my talents, but we're not doing anything for him. And while God waits for us to use the little that we have, we're waiting for him to give us something that he's waiting us for us to use that little that we do have, you know? And so if sharing our faith is, you know, uncomfortable and hard, which it so often is, <clears throat> then there's uh, two really main issues probably that I've uh, heard um, that could be the reason why it's so hard for us sometimes. And the first reason is that either we don't fully love people, we don't fully love people, or we don't fully appreciate what God has done for us. So what's the solution to fixing those problems? The solution is to take up our cross and follow Jesus. The solution is and taking up our cross it means to choose to love others, to choose to love God. And as we, in faith, get uncomfortable, then God, you know, makes it more comfortable. And I'm going to get give an illustration later that's going to help us understand this more. And so, uh, you know, one thing that I've learned uh, while going door to door is that um, to serve God, to take up our cross, we have to get uncomfortable. And so now I'm going to share um, a little bit about <clears throat> some of uh, my experiences um, canvassing and going door to door. So uh, these are pictures of uh, the mission trip that I was in uh, that lasted about a week, which was like two or three weeks ago. And um, we were, uh, if you see in like the bottom left corner, that's uh, the great controversy uh, that we were leaving on uh, people's doors and we were knocking on a lot of them as well and uh, leaving them on, on people's doors. And uh, in the top right, that's uh, me standing next to a, a tower of great controversies uh, that we were all passing out. And uh, middle, that's my team. We all had like different teams we were part of. Um, we had different vans that we all uh, went to every day and we would go out uh, for like six hours or so every day and uh, just leave and distribute these great controversies. And this was uh, through the ministry of Streams of Light uh, International. And we were, uh, you know, going door to door and getting uh, uncomfortable uh, sharing our faith and leaving these and having conversations with people, asking for Bible studies and asking you know, to pray with them. And it was a really, uh, you know, cool experience because I've never uh, done anything door to door before. 
And uh, in the bottom right, there's a map. Um, and that's like just one of the maps that we had that I took a picture of uh, that we would, you know, go around on the streets and we would uh, just do everything in our streets and, and we, you know, call our, our van to come give us more books and we do that. And um, so it was a really uh, cool experience uh, going door to door, but it takes um, a lot of getting uncomfortable uh, to do this. And uh, a couple more pictures. Uh, the one on the right is me with my uh, partner. Uh, we all had like partners. We all had our van and then we had partners that we would go out with um each day to um you know they would go on one side of the street now you go on the other and we you know do everything together like that and on the left is on uh sabbath um that's uh all of us uh, standing there with the great controversies in our hands and um pastor ted wilson gave the sermon uh, that morning and it was it was a really cool experience um on this mission trip um learning to uh, share our faith and take up our cross and follow jesus And the pictures um, of uh, us in a canvassing. Um, the one on the left is us on the first night um, at Olive Garden. And those are the people in my uh, canvassing group. Um, unfortunately, Elijah was not uh, with us yet on the first night. So I, he wasn't in that picture. Uh, he's sitting over there in the back. Uh, but uh, this is my team uh, plus Elijah. And then on the right is like our uh, the back of our van where we like have the great controversies that we were passing out uh, when we were uh, still in Missouri. And uh, the others are like other books that we were canvassing with and sharing uh, these with like the communities as we knocked at the doors. And um, <clears throat> you know, we, uh, on a daily schedule, like usually uh, in the mornings, we'd get up and, you know, have devotions and we'd like have breakfast. And then usually we have um, worship about 11. And then we have training at around like 12 and usually by 1230 uh, to one o'clock, we're in the field uh, working and knocking on doors and going to businesses. Um, and we do that until around, around like 830 or so um, every day, like, um, at like uh, weekend. we have like half day Friday. Um, and then we have lunch, of course, in the middle of that uh, time. <clears throat> but it's... Um, it's a good experience. And now I'm going to share a few testimonies uh, from uh, those experiences. So uh, the first one is of a lady uh, named Brenda. And uh, she was somebody that I came to um, and I, I, you know, knocked on the door and she uh, came out and I started like canvassing and telling her about the books. And <clears throat> she was really, really interested and, uh, you know, towards the end of our conversation, uh, she was crying. And um, I don't remember which books uh, she got, but she ended up getting one or two. Um, but then, uh, you know, it's such a privilege to pray with people because I asked her what she wanted prayer for. And she asked prayer for her son and uh, grandson who have recently uh, not I really been talking to her and have you know been upset with her and she was you know just so sad and she asked prayer for their salvation as well um and so i got to pray with her and as we were praying she was you know, just crying and crying and she was just so thankful and you know it's just just such a privilege to have this opportunity to be with someone and to pray with them to minister to them to give them these books to really just feel like jesus being a witness being able to have this experience it's um such a blessing even though it, it requires a lot of um getting uncomfortable to go door to door um the next uh, uh testimony i want to share is of um one day we were uh going to lunch and uh as per usual we went to taco bell and uh <laughs> and uh, so we were uh, finding one of the taco bells and um you know, most of them are like, for whatever reason, like the dining is like closed. And so they're just like drive through only. <clears throat> it was fun just driving around to different ones, trying to find one that was open. <clears throat> but we go to this one um, and the doors open. So, you know, we assume that it's dining. So we go in 
and we're looking at the menu to about to start ordering and i noticed that like all the workers in there are just like sitting around like doing nothing like not a single one is doing anything and so i just kind of look at them and i brought uh, gold tracks and so i you know i just kind of like said to them like hey you guys want a free gift and instantly like all of them just kind of look up and look at me i like pull them out of my pocket and i'm like here you guys want something and like all of them just like start crowding around the front counter i give out like a ton of them to them and it was uh really cool and and I ended up uh, giving them all out that I had. And one lady comes over uh, from the back and she's like, I want what I want. And so I run back out to the car and I was able to give her one too. Um, and then come to find out, like right after we come back in, um, uh, Chala tells me that, you know, like they're not even like doing orders inside. So it's like, what, why'd we come in? And so we ended up leaving and going to a different Taco Bell, but it was just amazing how, you know, the door was open for whatever reason so that I could give them those glow tracks. And that was uh, just super cool. And another testimony that actually just uh, happened like, like two hours ago, uh, we were at Jimmy John's a couple hours ago and I brought some uh, glow tracks. And uh, as I was, you know, checking out and like paying for it and stuff, um, I give the the guy some uh, glow tracks and he was like, oh thanks i'll take a look at these later so we eat our food and as i'm about to leave he he like beckons me over and he's like what, like what are these like what, what you're doing is so cool like he's like are you, what are you guys doing here and i, I tell him what we're doing and uh, he's like wow that's so awesome and i'm like hey you want to take a look at my other glow tracks he's like yes and so i show him like all the other ones that i have in my pocket he ends up like picking out like a bunch of them. He's like, oh man, I, I want to read these. These are so awesome. And he tells me like how he'd been like an atheist for years, but <clears throat> he um, uh, fairly recently or uh, yeah, he said that he just kind of had an epiphany and he's, uh, you know, been growing into his walk with Christ. And so um, I told him to wait for me and I went back out to the car and got a step to Christ and gave it to him. And he was just so thankful. And uh, happy, and he, you know, told me God bless, and that was just an awesome experience that happened like literally a couple hours ago. Um, but the next testimony is of a man um, who was at an auto shop, and this was the first day that I was being trained to do uh, businesses uh, with uh, David, <clears throat> and uh, David was showing me how to do businesses, and so we went into this auto shop, and uh, we wait uh, for this man to get off the phone. And he uh, comes up to uh, the counter and we start uh, canvassing him the books. And uh, he's, he's pretty interested. And so he ends up, uh, you know, wanting two, uh, but he pulls out, you know, we t tell him that for two books, he, you know, he can just get them for like, you know, 20 to you know 30 or so dollars, but he ends up pulling out 40 and for the books. And we're like, wow, you know, for $40, you can actually get four. And so we end up giving him four books and he's like, you know, really thankful for that. And then um, we get to pray with him as well. And he's, you know, he tells us like, thank you for the prayer. Like, you know, he was really appreciative. And then he was also interested in um, <clears throat> signing up for uh, revelation seminars. Um, so we um, got his uh, contact information and he's interested in coming to the uh, next upcoming uh, prophecy series, which is awesome. <clears throat> Uh, the next testimony is of uh, somebody we knocked on his door, and uh, my friend uh, Chala was uh, working with me, and uh, we uh, start canvassing uh, the cookbook, and he's like, oh, yeah, I love, you know, uh, cooking and healthy living and everything. He says, you know, me and my family, we were just actually watching Hope Channel, and we are like, oh, really, Hope Channel? I, like, look over at Chala, and I'm like, uh, uh, you know, Hope Channel, right? And then he's like, yes. And so he's like, oh, really? You guys know Hope Channel? And he said, are you guys Seventh-day Adventists? We say yes. And <clears throat> it was super cool meeting him. And he ends up um, giving us like $60. So we're able to leave him with uh, five books. And um, and then Chal is able to uh, pray uh, with him. And, uh, and he was very, very thankful for that. And um, we uh, told him, like, what church we're with and everything. He's like, yeah, I've, I've looked at um, Seventh-day Adventist church uh, before. I just, like, Googled it, but I've never been. And so, you know, we invited him to come, and he was just super thankful and, and kind about it. 
<clears throat> and then uh, we left, and uh, you know, right as I was, you know, back in the van, like restocking and everything, my books that we gave him, I realized we hadn't given him a great controversy. And I'm like, oh, you know, let's go back and give him a great controversy. And so we uh, load up my bag and, and pray. I'm about to go and knock down his door again. And of course, his, right as soon as I'm about to go, his garage door opens up and he comes out. Um, he's like taking out the trash or something. Out, and I'm like, praise God, you know, God opened the door for us. Like we didn't even have to knock this time. Uh, so I give him the great controversy. I'm like, man, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And so that was another uh, great experience. And um, another one I want to share is uh, one that happened uh, yesterday. <clears throat> And uh, this is uh, at a, a Mexican restaurant that I went to called La Feria. Um, and um, I go in the uh, restaurant and I, I talk to the, uh, the uh, young man in the middle. His name is um, Arturo. And I, you know, I asked him if I can like speak to the manager and he's like, oh, you know, the owner's on the phone. And so I wait for him to get off the phone and then I start uh, canvassing the books to him. And uh, he's uh, fairly interested. But then the AC guy comes. And I like wait for like, like five to ten minutes, uh, but I'm like still kind of there. And like you know, usually you try to be fast. So I'm like, you know, come on. <laughs> and so, uh, but anyways, um, he you know finishes that up, and then he gets back to canvassing. Um, he gets you know back to the conversation. So I'm able to canvass him like all the books, and he's um, he's fairly interested, but he has a lot of um he's really cautious and he you know he's uh he was a real he's a real searcher um for truth but he's really cautious so we ended up having about like a 40 minute conversation and we're just talking about lots of different things and like history and like um just you know american and, and spanish history and, and other things and you know finally he ends up you know i kind of keep pointing him back to the great controversy because it was talks a lot about the things that some of the things that he was mentioning um about you know faith and christianity and and some other things and uh he was kind of hesitant he was like well you know usually i don't i read books until i know a little bit about the author and so i started telling him about ellen white and just trying to break down some of these uh you know walls that he might have had like you know like oh i don't i don't really know if i should get this book and so i tell him about you know, ellen white and how um you know he was like asking you know like oh well i don't you know i want to know like that the author is a good person and like was she racist and, and other things because he, he was you know, talking about how um a lot of people are kind of um discriminate against like mexicans sometimes and so like oh no no ellen white is a wonderful uh, person. She actually spoke out against slavery uh, when it was, uh, you know, still a thing in America. And he's like, "Wow, really?" And so he's uh, getting more interested. And uh, finally, uh, at the end of the conversation, I'm able to convince him to get the great controversy, um, <clears throat> and he actually really wants it. And so he he got it, and he told me, "You know, I'm I'm going to read this book, and I'm going to study it because he's he's a really smart guy." And um, I talked to the elder of the church here later, and he said, yeah, I know, I know uh, Caesar is his name. I know Caesar, and he, I know he's a really uh, cool guy. And so uh, he got the great controversy, and um, it was just a really great conversation. Uh, but what was kind of cool is that I left, and I went and canvassed the store over, and as I'm leaving the, the store over after I came to them, I'm walking out and I see him on the street, like signaling me back. He's like, no, like, come back, come back. And I'm like, what? And so I start walking back and he's like, um, you know, somebody wants to know what you're selling. And so I come back and, you know, the waiter who I talked to at first, who told me to wait for the owner, uh, Caesar, who's on the right. Um, he uh, brought me to Arturo, who's in the middle. And I started talking to him and I told him about all the books and, he ended up wanting the great controversy as well. And also like the uh, two health books uh, that we had. So that was just a super cool experience. And I got to get a picture with them and I left them both with my numbers and they were you know, just really, really thankful and both uh, really uh, searching and both really uh, smart guys. So it was uh, 
it was a great experience uh, with them. <clears throat> but um, despite all of uh, you know these great experiences, it's not just um, it's not just about like the great experiences because we have like all of these wonderful like experiences, but it requires um, you know getting uncomfortable to get to these experiences. It's not just um, you know like fun all the time. Like there's times when it's like it doesn't feel good. Like there's times when it's hard to do these things. And so uh, what I want to share now um, is about how um, how Christ has become. Um, like even more meaningful to me during this time is because, um, you know, in the afternoons, like uh, we'd have lots of, you know, awesome testimonies, but <clears throat> in the mornings, a lot of times I was feeling very anxious about going out. And normally I'm not an anxious person actually like at all. Uh, but, you know, when we're going out every day, um, I was feeling uh, really anxious and, um, I was realizing that, you know, uh, I'm having to be, you know, get out of my comfort zone from what I'm normally used to. Now, I'm normally used to, you know, having, um, you know, a bed all to myself and, you know, like air conditioning and, you know, just like everything that I normally enjoy at home. <clears throat> and I have to get out of my comfort zone and, you know, go, go door to door um, every day. But I also wanted to, but like, it was just kind of like this battle inside that we had to you know, get uncomfortable. And so I believe it was um, not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before it was <clears throat> a couple of weeks into us canvassing. And, you know, I was just feeling uh, really weighed down uh, by this cross, um, feeling, um, you know, really, really anxious. And, um, you know, that particular morning I started um, crying. And I, uh, I talked to uh, Chala and I had him, you know, come to the sanctuary um, and pray with me. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you can ask him. And I was, uh, I was actually crying pretty hard and I was just feeling really um, anxious and it was just kind of feeling uh, weighed down. And I was realizing that, you know, when we take up our cross and follow Jesus and decide to do his work, we have to um, get uncomfortable. <clears throat> and I was uh, talking with somebody um, just about a week ago who has done these uh, canvassing. Uh, he, for, he did it for many years in his life. And he told me that, um, you know, one thing that you have to realize in canvassing um, is that many people, what many people don't get past is themselves when they when they're canvassing many people you know get, get discouraged and uh, stop canvassing or give up because they don't realize and they aren't able to get past themselves and you know i realize that that's very true when we're um you know canvassing or doing whatever to get uncomfortable it's not about me it's not about me getting uncomfortable it's about me doing God's work. It's about being a blessing to others. It's about witnessing to others. It's about praying with others. And so, you know, what I learned is that when, you know, I was sacrificing these things, I wasn't um, doing it because, you know, I was important, but I was doing it because I needed to be a blessing and because I wanted to be a blessing to others. And, you know, it reminded me of when Christ, um, <clears throat> when Christ was uh, tempted, um, you know, to give up, um, give up on us when he was, um, you know, in Gethsemane and he was feeling this cross on him. He was feeling the weight of the sins of the world, of your and my sins on him. And, you know, he was tempted, you know, to give up being uncomfortable, to, to go back to heaven and, you know, like, why, you know, suffer all of this for you and me? Why not just go back home to heaven where it's, you know, literally you have like the adoration of angels. You have, you know, perfection and harmony and beauty and comfort and people that actually love you. 
Like, why would you go through all of this? Um, why would you? But he did go through it, and he did it to be a blessing to others. And, you know, we need to <clears throat> remember what Christ has done for us and have the same spirit of, you know, God, I, it doesn't matter to me that I'm going to be uncomfortable because I want to focus on being a blessing to others. And in uh, John chapter 12, verses 27 to 28, Jesus kind of voices this internal struggle that he was having. And he says, now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. And then he says, Father, glorify your name. And this, uh, you know, I can really relate to this while I was canvassing, you know, I felt like my soul was troubled, but well, what was I going to say to God? You know, save me from this hour, but for this purpose, I came to this hour. That's why I came to do canvassing, to be a blessing to others. And so instead, we need to say what Christ says, Father, glorify your name. And that's uh, what Christ calls us to do. By Christ, we need to say, you know, Father, I'm willing to live and labor and sacrifice even unto death for the saving of humanity. I'm willing to take up my cross daily to get uncomfortable and to serve you. I'm willing to just be a blessing to other people and not focus on myself. <clears throat> And um, the final uh, verse that I want to share from Luke chapter 9 is, um, go ahead and read uh, the whole passage again. It says, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save him. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. And reading this verse um, regarding to what I've been learning in the past few weeks, it really put these verses together um, in my mind because what Jesus is focusing on when it says take up our cross is talking about not just taking up our cross, not doing this, not doing that, not just taking up our cross for no reason, We're taking up our cross. Do you remember why? To be a blessing to others, right? We're taking up our cross to show love for God and love for man. And relating to this, Jesus says immediately after, you know, don't be ashamed of me. And so taking up our cross means not being ashamed of him. Because if we're ashamed of him, then we're not going to be his witness. We're not going to speak up for him. And that's not denying ourselves and taking up our cross. <clears throat> so we can either take up our cross and be his witness and uh, you know, be a blessing to others, or we're going to be ashamed of him. Um, so the next point I want to make is don't be ashamed. Speak up. Second Timothy um, chapter one verse seven to nine. I love this uh, this passage. <clears throat> it says for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. And you know, sometimes we're even going to have this, um, we're going to have waves of fear come to us we're going to have feelings of uncomfortableness but when we choose to cling in faith to christ this fear isn't going to have power over us because god has given us um the spirit of power and love and a sound mind 
And because of that, we don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be afraid to speak up. We don't have to let this fear govern our actions because Christ's uh, grace is sufficient for us to give us strength to do all things. <clears throat> but we don't have to be ashamed. Another verse on this <clears throat> is Philippians 1, which says, According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. And so we're going to have all boldness. We're going to be ashamed of nothing for Christ. And um, one uh, final, uh, one other testimony that I want to share is um, this guy that you see on the right. Um, you know, when we canvass, we have to uh, be bold. It's not just like, <laughs> it's not like we just you know, kind of go to this door and then we go over to the next door and we like go over to the next door, like, you know, like a, a neat plan. Like sometimes, you know, there's like road workers. Sometimes there's, uh, you know, just people in the street. Sometimes there's people, uh, you know, going for a walk or, uh, you know, a taxi driver, which is uh, a, another story, um, or like, or an Uber driver. Or uh, in this particular situation, it was uh, some moving guys. Uh, they were in a truck. And so, you know, we have to be bold um, when we share our faith. And so I walked up to this moving truck. And before I even actually say anything, this guy says to me, you know, hey, kid, what you selling? And so I started canvassing him the books and he was really interested. <clears throat> and uh, before I finished canvassing, actually, he asked me, he said, hey, you know, do you know anything about, uh, you know, this book I've been seeing? Uh, we've been seeing this book uh, called you know, The Great uh, the great Something. And I'm like, The Great Controversy? Like, yeah, The Great Controversy. Like, what is that book? And because he'd been seeing it all over town because of, you know, the mission trip, we'd been leaving him. And also while canvassing, we'd kept leaving him. Like, yeah, what is the great controversy? And I'm like, yeah, we actually have some great controversies. And so I tell him about it. He's like, yeah, we had one, but you know, we, you know, threw it out when we were emptying the moving truck. And, you know, do you have one? And so I'm able to uh, walk in. Um, Joel and I said, you know, we need some uh, great controversies ASAP. And so, uh, you know, he starts coming. And uh, so I finished canvassing him. He's really interested, but unfortunately, he doesn't have any money on him. Uh, but anyways, uh, we were planning to give him the great controversy. Uh, but before that, we gave him a uh, Steps to Christ. We have like a little Steps to Christ book um, that we, you know, leave with people sometimes if they're really interested, but, you know, they can't uh, get anything. And so I leave him uh, with that, him and his uh, worker buddy. Um, but unfortunately they start, they'd finished up, uh, unloading everything and they were shutting the back. And, you know, he told me, he said, you know, sorry, we're finished. We got to go. And so as uh, he's walking back to his car door to leave, uh, sure enough, Chala pulls in right in front of him. I'm like, yes, praise God. And so I say, oh, here's my driver. He's here with a great controversy. I'm like, oh, he's like, oh, okay. And so we walk up uh, back up uh, to the, to the car. And we pull out the great controversies and he gets, I don't know, Chala gives him like six or seven of them or something. Uh, so he, he's able to, you know, give them uh, to his friends. Um, he said he would, so praise God for that. Um, but that was just a cool experience uh, about being bold. And we can't, uh, you know, be afraid because a lot of times, you know, we hear the Holy Spirit say, you know, you should say something. You know, why don't you talk to this person or, you know, that person looks down and why don't you say something to them? And we're like, oh, I know, God, that would require being uncomfortable. And we, you know, just postpone uh, the Holy Spirit and we neglect to obey his voice. And we're missing divine appointments. And Christ wants us to um, listen to the Holy Spirit. And he wants us to be bold for him, to not be ashamed to speak up, uh, to um, have all boldness and witnessing for him. And that's what it means for you and I to take up our cross, to get out of our uh, Laodicean mindset and to be zealous for God so that he can come again.
And uh, one more verse I want to share, uh, share on this is from uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. That says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So we don't have to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's good news. And, um, you know, sometimes um, as Christians, we um, unfortunately make excuses. Sometimes we say, you know, I'm not good at doing this. I'm not good at sharing my faith. Um, you know, maybe that's just the pastor's job or I'm not good at, um, you know, giving Bible studies or. I'm not you know, good at, at doing this, but <clears throat> something we need to realize is that sharing our faith is not uh, just like a spiritual gift. Like God wants every church member to share our faith because that's, that's like, you know, that's like something that everyone can do. And that's something, you know, that's really going to give us purpose and fulfillment in this life. And that's what Jesus intends for all of us to do. Um, and that's what, you know, Remember, our first point was that it's a requirement to take up our cross and to follow him. And taking up our cross is not just the self-denial. It's showing love for God and love for man by being a blessing to them and by being a witness. So sharing our faith um, isn't just restricted to some people. It's for all of us. And um, an illustration I, I want to give on this is that, like, maybe there's, like, uh, suppose there's, like, a guy that, um, was in a serious car accident <clears throat> and he breaks uh, both of his legs um, and the bones are just kind of shattered in there and so <clears throat> he has to, he's taken into surgery and you know by a miracle they're able to repair them um, but he has to wait for several months for them to heal and you know after they heal you know but while you know, they're still healing. He's just sitting there for months, not using his legs. So what happens to the muscles while he's sitting there not using them, right? They, they atrophy, they, they grow weaker. You know, when you don't use your muscles, they, they die. And, um, but after his legs are healed or after the bones are healed and, you know, the doctor tells him that his bones are healed and, you know, he can, uh, you know, start uh, recovering. Uh, what does he do after, you know, he gets the A-OK -okay that his bones are healed? He, you know, jumps out of his hospital bed and starts running to the car to drive himself home, right? No, he has to go through physical therapy, right? He needs to repair those muscles that have atrophied and died. He has to, you know, learn how to walk again. He has to learn you know, by just baby steps. He's going to be, you know, kind of walking slowly and using, you know, supports to try to get himself to walk again and he's going to stumble and he's going to slip and he's going to maybe even fall, but he's learning how to walk again. He's building those muscles and every day he's able to walk a little bit more and a little bit more until eventually he can walk again and then he can run again and he's able to, um, you know, uh, function again. He's able to build those muscles back up. And it's the same for you and I. Sometimes uh, by inactivity, we are um, we feel like we don't know how to share our faith. And you know, I say we, not just you guys. I say you know we. We all you know struggle a lot of times to share our faith, to be bold and speaking about Jesus. But a lot of times it's just because we're so inactive in sharing our faith and being bold for Jesus that our spiritual muscles are so weak and we need to learn how to exercise them more and more so that um so that we can get better it's not something like oh you know i'm not going to try because i'm bad no that just means you need to try more so that you can get better right and that's what christ is calling us to do to um, put in effort consistent effort not just intermediate effort where you try sometimes and it doesn't go so well. So you stop trying, just keep trying and your muscles will grow. And so, 
Um, as a review, uh, this is the final slide. Um, how is God calling you to take up your cross and follow him? We notice that taking up your cross is a requirement for following Christ. So everyone, we all need to take up our cross. We notice that the emphasis isn't on what you aren't doing, but on what you are doing. It's not just that you don't do these things, but that you do these things. You're not just not doing these sins, but you're also actively seeking to be a blessing to others, to, to love others, to love God supremely, and to be a witness. That's what it means to take up our cross. You notice that uh, taking up our cross means loving God and loving others. That taking up our cross starts every morning. It's to be our first work every day. Are we just thinking about ourselves? Or are we thinking about how we can be a witness to others? Are we just spending large portions of our time just seeking entertainment? Or how we can uh, be a blessing to others? We also noticed that to follow Christ, we need to get uncomfortable. A lot of times being a witness for God, it's going to be uncomfortable. But as we practice it more and more and do it more and more, it actually gets more natural because our, our spiritual muscles are getting stronger. But unless we're willing to take up our cross and get uncomfortable, we're, we're never um, going to get any better. And so Christ wants us to be more like Jesus and to take up our cross. And the, the final point we notice is that uh, we shouldn't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of uh, being a witness for Christ. Don't be ashamed. And so I repeat again, how is God calling you to take up your cross and follow him? How is God calling you? It might be um, <clears throat> that God is calling you to, you know, start, uh, you know, giving out glow tracks. I know this is something for me that has been a huge blessing in, uh, in my own spiritual walk and just revitalizing my uh, you know, Christian experience and learning how to be more of a witness is literally just ordering glow tracks. Like you can just go to like, I think it's like glowonline.org or something like that, where you can just literally order, order like a hundred glow tracks for literally like $6. It's, it's not much. And you can just, you know, give them to people wherever you see them. Like you're in a line at Walmart or like you're at the gas station and you pull one by the pump. It's as simple as that. And even doing that, you're exercising your spiritual muscles and you're getting stronger. Learn how to share your faith. It might be that, you know, God is uh, calling you to, you know, go door to door sometime. You know, maybe uh, there's an opportunity for you to, uh, canvas uh, where you are and to you know, get uncomfortable if, uh, if you think that God may be calling you to do that um, sometime. Maybe God is calling you um, to ask people uh, for Bible studies. God wants you to take up your cross by focusing on others and focusing on being a blessing and not being afraid to get uncomfortable and to ask them, hey, you know, would you be interested in studying the Bible with me? And not being afraid to just have spiritual conversations with people. Um, that's where we miss a lot of great opportunities is because we're too afraid to speak up and to, you know, ask people. Maybe God is calling you to take up your cross by going on a mission trip. Maybe uh, there's some mission trip that he wants you to save up for. Maybe some opportunity uh, that somebody is planning uh, near you or something. Maybe there's, you know, God wants you to be a missionary um, in your home to your family. Um, there's something you can do more maybe to be a blessing to your family. It's not just being a blessing to our friends and, you know, people at school or people at work or, you know, other people. You need to focus uh, even more so on being a blessing to your family and to your siblings and your parents. Not just, you know, focusing on what you want all the time and what I want all the time, but how we can just help them out and relieve their stress and how we can, you know, let our siblings have extra and let ourselves have less. And that's, you know, just, that's just exciting. Just 
to be like Jesus, you know. Maybe uh, God is, you know, just calling you to just be bold wherever you are in your walk with him today. Maybe, you know, you're um, in a place where, you know, God may not be calling you to be a missionary or to uh, take a summer to go canvassing, but you know that God um, wants you and is calling you to be a missionary wherever you are at today. And I would just invite you to uh, take some time to think about how you can be a missionary for Christ, how you can share your faith more actively and uh, how you can take up your cross and follow him and his mission. So now um, I'd like to pray with you guys and um, yeah, let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> Dear father in heaven, Lord, um, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us on the cross and how you died for us, not thinking about yourself, but how you could, you know, just save us. God, you're, you're so kind to us. You're so loving. You're so patient. We pray that you would teach us how we can focus uh, more on others, not so much on ourselves. God, um, teach us how we can share our faith more, how we can focus on being a blessing to others. God, um, I pray that um, whatever that may be for all of us individually, that you would just give us wisdom and love and remind us to not be afraid, remind us to share our faith more actively, remind us to be more like Jesus. And God, we thank you um, just for the power of your word and for this powerful passage in Luke chapter nine. God, please help us to apply it and uh, for us to just seek to be more like you, and to follow Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Isaac, so much for that message. Take up your cross. It's a blessing to hear everything that you've been able to go through uh, with your canvassing. And that's the prayer for all of us, right, is that we can actually use what God has given us to be able to go out and share his message. And the first step is just take our cross, give it all to him. So as usual, we do have questions afterwards. Um, if you're up for that, Isaac, all good for that? All right. So yeah, we'll have questions after. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, DM them to me if you want them anonymous. If you want to speak out, you can speak out. If you want to just type it in there, you can type it. Um, and you can think about all your questions while we listen to some good music by Brother Andrew.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Andrew, for that special song that you were able to give us and share with us tonight. Okay, okay. So, as now, it is question time. So, let's see. We had a question in. Okay. You ready, Isaac? Cool. So, first question that came in says, I get really nervous talking to people. How can I share my faith when I can barely say hi to people? Yeah, there. I know sometimes I get uh, really scared too um, talking to people. In Like, you know, the shyest person you'll ever meet. Um, but, you know, how we can uh, learn how to talk to people is to just, you know, one big thing is I, I pray to God. I ask him to help me have the strength to um, share my faith. And, you know, sometimes we just got to take a step of faith, like, in the conversation, like sometimes we just got to put our body in motion. Like, you know, like I'm afraid to go say something to someone. So I ask God, I say, you know, please help me God to uh, say something. And, you know, maybe I'll just like make the first move of just walking towards them. And it's like, you know, okay. At that point, you know, I'm walking to them. So I've got to say something. And so that'll uh, help me. Or maybe, you know, I just say their name. I say, God, just help me to say their name. And I say their name and they say, what? And, you know, at that point, I've got to tell them, you know, like, what, why I asked their name. But, um, you know, when somebody asks or when, I guess, to share our faith better, um, we can pray. But it, it takes practice and it takes, um, you know, faith, trusting God's word. Uh, asking him to make us bolder and you know he will you know the bible says in philippians 4 13 that we can do all things through christ who strengthens us and that god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind and so as we focus on jesus more and focus on loving people more and focus on ourselves less then he's going to give us that strength and it can be hard and it can take practice. And, you know, sometimes we can, um, you know, fail and sometimes uh, we're going to do it, but most importantly, don't get discouraged. If sometimes, you know, like, you know, I should have said something, but you know, I, I chickened out. Don't get discouraged. Just ask God to help you to make you stronger. And uh, he will. And, uh, you know, God will, uh, be your strength, and uh, he will help you. Amen. I can totally agree with that as a fellow introvert. <laughs> kind of just got to put your body in motion, or else if you don't, you'll probably never go through with it, and God will just help with the rest. Amen. The next question we have is... Um, how can I improve my faith when it comes, when it has been feeling, let me, let me repeat that. How can I improve my faith when it has been feeling like a weak area lately? Sometimes I wake up and I either have um, a quick devotion or wake up and have to get ready in a rush and forget. Yeah, something that I've, um, found helpful is to, you know, we talked about taking up our cross um, every morning and every day. And it's not just like taking up our cross and having, you know, when we have a devotion, like what's the purpose of our devotion? Um, when we pray to him, why, why are we praying to him? Um, one thing that I've found helpful 
is every morning surrendering surrendering myself 100% to God. And I found that if I can say to God, honestly, God, I surrender myself to you 100% to this day. And I say to him, you know, God, whatever you say to me through your Holy Spirit, I want to follow. Then that's when we're going to be in a place where, you know, he can really use us and we're not going to be, you know, just kind of lukewarm because if we can't honestly say that, then he's going to convict us with the Holy Spirit and say, you know, what do I need to surrender in order to be able to say that? And, you know, just getting to the point where we choose to say that and we choose to surrender all to God, um, you know, that's when we're going to have uh, more faith and when we're going to be growing because we're not going to grow when we're not surrendered to God. We're not going to grow if we're not taking up our cross and we're not following him. Uh, but if we are taking up our cross saying, God, you know, this day, I want to surrender to you 100% and follow you, even though <clears throat> it's going to feel uncomfortable, even though it, uh, you know, I'm going to have to not think about myself, but God, I want you to, um, transform my life and I want uh, you to start, um, becoming my all in all. And, you know, when we focus on that and say, God, I'm going to give you my 100% for this day, then that day he can grow you. And so that's, that's one tip that I've found helpful. Awesome. The next question that came in is in witnessing, you need to keep we need to keep our ears open to hear from God. How can we hear the voice of God? Yeah, um, you know, one prayer that I pray a lot is God um, remind me to pray to you more. Like <laughs> I ask God, you know, I, I ask him to remind me a lot of times because so often we forget to stay connected to him and we forget to keep praying to him. So I ask, ask God, I say, you know, please remind me today to speak to you more, remind me to be open to your Holy Spirit's leading. And, you know, God just help me to remember to, uh, you know, help me to remember why I'm out here that I'm supposed to be walking with you through the whole day and not just, you know, kind of just doing my job and, you know, knocking on this door and doing that thing or, you know, doing my job or going to school or, or whatever. I'm not just doing that for just, you know, to get through it. I'm going to be connected with God and I want to be open to the leading of his Holy spirit. And so one uh, prayer that I pray a lot is God, please remind me um, to be open to your Holy spirit, to be connected with you. And so often he does remind me. And I, you know, during that time I ask God, I say, okay, God, I want to be 100% to you right now. And, you know, when I pray that prayer, I can just, you know, feel God's Holy Spirit uh, enter me. And, you know, I, I just know that uh, I can, you know, be bolder for him during that moment. Because it's a lot of times when we're not walking with him and we're forgetting about him. And, and you know, sometimes temptation comes and it's a lot harder to stand up against that temptation. Or it's a lot harder to share our faith when we haven't been connected with him through the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? We need to <clears throat> try to stay connected with him all the time. And then when that time comes, it's like, you know, I've already been connected with him. I've already, you know, given my heart wholly to him. And you're, you know, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then he can help you to be bold in sharing your faith or bold in, you know, resisting this temptation. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it's all about, that's, that's that part of making him first in your life and having that devotion in the morning, kind of inviting him in and throughout the day, you know, you're allowing for him to kind of speak through you. And that's what you can really hear. Amen. Next question says, are there any tips you can give to, witness it, to witnessing to family members who have completely surrendered their hearts, who haven't completely surrendered their hearts? Sorry. 
you know, uh, it's that's definitely uh, one of the most uh, difficult things because, um, you know, your family members, they're, they're really close to you and you uh, really want them uh, to be safe. And, you know, something that I found is that, um, you know, just being a daily uh, example of a godly life that is is powerful and we don't realize it a lot of times but um you know it really does have an effect and they really can see your example and how you are um a lot of my uh, i have i have seven siblings uh for those of you who don't know i have seven siblings and uh five of them are younger and two of them are older and uh, my younger siblings, um, you know, often, you know, they'll, they'll tell me, like, you know, I know, like, that, you know, you are a Christian, but you're a Christian that's, you know, you're different than, you know, some of my other family members who, you know, like, say they're Christian, but, like, they're, you know, they don't act the same way. And, you know, they'll tell me, like, you know, your example, you know, they don't say it exactly this way, but they know that my example is um, really what Christ is like. And so, you know, if you and I just have an example and just faithfully follow Jesus as close as we can and, you know, just focus on being a blessing to others, you know, our our goodness um, will bring out their um, not goodness. And, you know, a lot of times in the Bible, it was the goodness of, of Jesus that led others to hate him. And, you know, it's our goodness that, you know, leads others to feel, um, <clears throat> their need of repentance. And that's, you know, it's something that is a powerful witness in itself is just, being a, a positive example to write for representing Jesus's character is you know, that's going to really lead people to know that you have a connection with Jesus. And, you know, if they want to have that same connection, then, you know, they knew, they know who to talk to. They know, you know, who they can be more like, and, you know, they have you in their life. Um, to be more, uh, you know, if they want to you know, have a conversation with you. And, you know, of course, when conversations come up, um, because there's always conversations that happen sometimes that, you know, it's, it's a deeper conversation because a lot of times we have, uh, you know, just a lot of um, surface level conversations um, with family and, you know, with friends or whoever, but, you know, when we have deep conversations, like deep, meaningful conversations with people, like that's an opportunity where you and I can bring God in and, and start to share our faith in, in a way that we can, in any way that we can, you know, depending on the person. And they're either going to respond positively or negatively. And, you know, if they respond positively, then keep sharing. And if they respond negatively, then uh, you know, it's probably a sign that they're not open at that time. So, you know, just keep representing Jesus, keep being an example, uh, be consistent in your life. Um, you know, don't be uh, a, hip a hypocrite. Uh, try to be like Jesus um, all the time. And, you know, they're going to see that example. And uh, of course, also pray for them, pray for them, pray for them that God would intervene in their life in a way that he could not intervene had you not prayed. Pray that prayer, and that, that will help. Amen. Thank you. Well, that's from the questions that I had. Anybody have any more questions? I don't want to skip out if you got one. Speak now or forever hold your peace. It's going. It's going. And it seems that it has gone. 
So thank you, Isaac, for taking the time to be able to speak for us tonight and I mean, to be able to answer these questions as well. It's been a true blessing to have you here and speak for us. The music was great. And now, as we close, uh, we will have Danielle close us out in prayer. Okay, everybody, if you want to bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for us sermon today. And we pray that it has touched many hearts here today and that it will guide them towards you and towards your will. And Lord, we ask that you teach us the difference between selfishness and unselfishness, that we can become more like you and that we can rely on your strength to help others and teach them of your word. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, pray that you have a blessed Sabbath and that um, the Lord will just bless you as you have a Sabbath and move on to the next week. And we will see you all 